This group was formed uh, towards the end of the, my first year at UNC as a doctoral student. And basically the idea was to have an outlet to write for an ensemble that's not a traditional ensemble like a big band. I was, I was looking for something to sort of push my writing in a different direction and uh, also incorporate some instruments that don't typically get involved in a jazz ensemble. There's no rule book really for this, right? There are a lot of arranging books out there for big band and uh, jazz combos and things like this, but when you've got a string quartet and three woodwinds and three brass and a rhythm section, there are all these different considerations. You know, it's like I can't go into these charts with the same level of confidence that I do with a big band chart where I know, oh, that's gonna work. Um, a lot of it is bringing something in and being like, okay, I hope this sounds all right, you know, and then modifying things as necessary. Uh, writing for the group has been a really interesting experience. Um, it's really opened up my ears to things I don't normally think about when writing for a big band. Uh, we kind of have these conventions that we like to follow for writing for a big band, so it's very easy to uh, figure out what instruments you're going to have doing certain things. Uh, with this group, it was kind of like totally rethinking that and having to think more about what does this instrument sound like in this register, how is this going to work in the chord, things like that. It's pretty interesting to write for this group because, uh, you know, it's a good challenge, you know, to work with instruments that jazz musicians and jazz composers don't necessarily work with as much, you know, all the strings, flute and clarinet, uh, French horn, that kind of stuff. Um, so it's really, it's really interesting to, you know, go in and talk with the string folks and say, hey, could you guys play this? Or, you know, what would it sound like if we did this? You know, like, what are, what are the craziest sounds you can make on your instrument? You know, just when, you know, I'm a jazz pianist and I don't really, it's not like I'm in an orchestra rehearsal all day, you know. So long in this group has been a very rewarding and interesting challenge. It puts me in a situation where I have to address those vibes in the way that I solo, so I can't just play like I would in a, in a you know, jazz quartet. How am I linking up with, with the string quartet sound? How am I linking up with the sounds the flute and the oboe are making right now? It makes me hear things completely differently. <laughs> Playing in all angles is unlike anything I've ever had the opportunity to do before in that it is at once both uh, a completely jazz group and a completely classical group and then at the same time it's neither. I think this group opens up a lot of new sound for me to explore and I really appreciate the um, the encouragement to go wild on exploring all these different techniques. It actually fits very well in the jazz context. Uh, I think it adds a little bit of sassiness on top of the regular jazz big band that you would hear. When we're preparing a new piece or uh, preparing for a performance, an upcoming performance or something like that, um, the questions that the string players will have about the music or the suggestions that the string players will have about the music will be completely different from anything that I would have thought of myself because they're coming from a completely different background. And um, in that way, it's been very enriching to my uh, artistic sensibility just because I'm seeing music from a, a side that I haven't seen it from before. In all angles, I think it works a little differently that we're aiming toward the highest uh, fine standard in, in jazz that is a lot of improvisation but in a few takes you have to get it to like a, almost like a great composed storytelling. On a recorded album in a nice studio like the one at the University of Northern Colorado, you know, we'll be able to hear every note of the music and uh, it's really exciting to be able to have that like neat mixed down product and I'm, I'm just excited to share the music with, with everyone. Uh, Greg Weiss wrote some amazing pieces, some great music by Tom Amend, and uh, maybe most exciting of all is that we're recording with Alex Sipiagin, who is just a total monster on the trumpet and really, I think, brings everything up to the next level. He was the guest artist for the UNC Trumpet Festival, and as soon as I found out that he would be the guest artist, 
I immediately emailed Mike Conrad and said, hey, this guy's coming to town. Uh, we got to play a concert with him in November at the University of Northern Colorado. Um, and it was just so thrilling for the entire group to get to perform with a musician of that caliber. And he approached me after the concert about recording with the group. He was really interested in doing some more of this music. Um, so we're just so thrilled to have him be a part of the project. I came and I have such a great time. And uh, I performed with uh, this ensemble, with this quintet directed by Michael Conrad. And shortly after our performance, He's got brilliant idea. Why don't we record this project? And here we come. It's a small band mentality with a large orchestra sound. That's what I like about this instrumentation. And especially to be soloist as a special guest, it's uh, like a special flavor for me. You know. Well, this is absolutely amazing team, first of all. I understand this from very beginning, when I put, back in November, when I came here, uh, those guys totally respect each other, everybody absolutely great musicians. Level is really high. I'm a teacher myself. I, I teach in NYU, New York University, and I know uh, those students is absolutely up to, up to level of the professionals, you know. And, uh, you know, the way they listen to each other, the way, way they communicate with each other, the way they sit in the control room and care about music, that's amazing. Yeah. Everybody, like, not just musicians, they're friends, they respect each other. And I'm so happy to be part of it, really. And I do the best I can to promote and help to move this record out. So the University of Northern Colorado started this new award through the College of Performing and Visual Arts called the Arts Innovation Award. And I thought this ensemble being unique and innovative the way it is uh, would be the perfect choice for, for a group to apply for something like that. And uh, fortunate enough to receive it and use that money for both the album project and the tour that we're planning. The Community Foundation through the City of Greeley has a grant called Arts Alive and I applied for money to uh, use for this recording session and the grant came through for us and we're really grateful to have that money to make this happen. I'm really excited to be taking this music on the road to the Midwest. Um, I'm from Iowa originally so I sort of planned the tour around going through my hometown and uh, some of the cities along the way from Greeley all the way to Chicago. We got six concerts booked, and then we're gonna make our way back through St. Louis and Kansas City. I've got a couple of big bands rented, and it should be really fun. Mainly, I'm just excited about um, getting this music out to people who haven't heard it before. And I, I think we have something really special going on, and um, it'll be really nice to have that potentially validated on tour. <laughs> For the tour, um, we made it to a, a sound that's so unique that's just belonging to all angles ourselves that we can't wait to share for the audience.